If you're looking to place a bet on any of the sports going on, betonline.ag is the best and only place to lock it in. From game spreads and totals to team, player, and coaching props, BetOnline gives you more options to wager than any place online. And there's always the online casinos as well. It never closes. So head to betonline.ag today and take advantage of all the great sign-up bonuses. Again, that's betonline.ag and sign up today. BetOnline, your online sportsbook experts. Okay guys, really quick, I want to tell you about this awesome company I'm partnering with, Viome. You can find out what foods and supplements are right for your body with their health intelligence test. It looks at your gut microbiome health, your cellular health, immune system health, and more. I'm super excited. I just received my testing kit. It's super simple, and I can't wait to get my results back. Seriously encouraging you all to try out Viome. It's so cool, and it gives you personalized information and resources for your individual health. Order your test on www.viome.com and use code POLINA at checkout. That's P-O-L-I-N-A. I can't wait for you guys to get your results. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my podcast. I'm your host, Polina Edmonds, and today on the pod, I have a special guest. I'm here with 2019 Junior World Bronze Medalist, it's Ting like a- Sway. Yes. Thanks for coming on the show today, Ting. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. So I noticed you when you were an intermediate lady way back in the day. I think it was 2015. You were fourth on the podium, I think, as an intermediate lady. But I had been watching all of the younger levels because I kind of wanted to see, you know, which younger girls were starting to show well and show their abilities and uh yeah you definitely caught my attention then you had excellent technique and afterwards I continued to follow you and your skating journey and you've grown up to be such a beautiful skater with gorgeous elements and presentation so very nice to see (laughs) actually like funny story about that I remember back in 2015 when you were like live tweeting from some of like the skaters you were watching and when you like tweeted about me I actually didn't even have Twitter back then I was like a little too young for it but my friends who were already on Twitter they were like oh my gosh did you see what Paulina Edmonds tweeted about you I'm like wait what no like what's going on so I was like scrambling to like like make an account on Twitter like get on Twitter to like see like what you wrote And it was crazy. I mean, everyone was, like, super excited. I was completely fangirling. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, Paulina Edmonds just tweeted, like, about me. This is the best moment of my life. Oh, my God. That's so cute. Yeah, no. When I was was younger in the younger levels, I had a blast just running around nationals after my event and, you know, watching all of the seniors. But um, as a senior skater, I still remembered, you know, that feeling and that awe, like, being around so many different great skaters at nationals and so I kind of like to give that recognition back a little bit and if I see a skater in the younger levels that is really talented I definitely want to you know give them some praise because I would have loved that when I was little so um yeah well deserved on your end (laughs) awesome of you to do by the way (laughs) <laughs> well the last couple of years you haven't really been on the scene I know you were injured but what happened right so I first got injured March of 2019 um, at the end of the month and it was like three torn ligaments on the outside of my ankle plus like a bone fracture bone bruising just like a lot of damage to that one area um But I was able to, you know, like bounce back pretty quickly. In six months, I was back on the competition scene. I had U.S. International Classic in Salt Lake City. That was my first competition back. And you know what happened? It wasn't like super great or super terrible. But after that, I was supposed to be competing in Finland in the fall. But like a few days before I had to go, I was working on off-ice rotations, but I was trying to go for more rotation instead of landing on like the flat part of my foot, I landed like on top of it, did like a little roll, um, tore ligaments on the outside and inside, like 
a lot more damaged even than the first time. And so... <laughs> Oh my God, that just sounds horrible. <laughs> like my ankle, I'm like touching it right now. I'm like, am I okay from just hearing this? Yeah, I, I mean, it was a lot, but you know, I'm like working through it now. And so like since then, I've just kind of been like rehabbing, trying to get everything back. Obviously when like COVID hit, that changed a lot of things. And uh, I'm still trying to get everything back just because it's been such like a slow and agonizing process. Like I cannot even describe how <laughs> just frustrating it has been like coming back the second time, especially after being able to come back so quickly after the first time I injured it. So for a lot of the time during my like PT sessions and like rehab, it was kind of like, why am I still here? Like, why do I still have to do this? I was already back on the ice like the first time like what's going on so it's just kind of been about learning to be patient and like ugh, I hate saying it but trusting the process yeah and yeah yeah totally I mean that sounds basically like a double comeback at this point because you got over the injury you started to be right on the right track you wanted to be in and then back to the same spot uh and yeah slower slower recovery is really interesting. That reminds me a lot of when I hurt my ankle uh, in my senior season of 2016. And I, I took similarly around six months, almost nine to kind of recover, but I was not fully recovering. I was being really impatient. I was jumping back on the ice too soon on again, off again. And then I just re-injured myself. And then I had to take so long, completely off, like 10 months, no skating, no running whatsoever and then it took me a really really long time to get all of my jumps back because of needing to go super slow to not re-injure and so it's it's a really hard process to go through it's not easy especially because as skaters we want to bounce back so quick and so I I really feel you there <laughs> yeah absolutely I mean I had like a similar thing like second time coming back I was definitely like trying to push myself to get back like as quickly as I could um probably like trying some of these jumps like before I was ready so like a big part of it was trying to balance like okay like am I actually like ready for this and how do I train smartly so it was a big shift for me to like from training like super hard to like training smarter which I had never really done before in my career as a skater yeah that that is such a key word right there train smart especially when you have injury prevention in your arsenal now because like you said you hadn't experienced it before so it's a whole new ball game in terms of training but how did you feel coming back you know the physical part of it is really hard obviously but mentally how how did you deal with being out and then slowly trying to get your jumps and everything back yeah that is a really great question so I'd say the first time I was kind of in this mindset where I had never been injured before. So in my mind, I was kind of like, okay, this is a new experience. I have no idea what to expect, but I'm just going to like go at it with like all my might. And that was great. Second time around, I wasn't so positive. <laughs> I wasn't so optimistic about everything because I had I like learned and experienced how difficult the process was it's like oh my gosh I have to go through it all again so second time um I was a bit more just like pessimistic you know still like working really hard to come back but mentally it was a lot more challenging and actually like in addition to that I was kind of going through um, a phase I think a lot of skaters, like high level, lower level, like anyone kind of struggles with, where you're transitioning from high school to college and not exactly sure what you want to do next with your life. So as I was doing that, I was kind of like, okay, like, what do I actually want next in my life? So I'm currently on a gap year. I still ended up taking a gap year and am like, trying to figure out what I want to do, but it's most likely going to be like skating in college, like a lot of these other amazing skaters are doing, like Nathan, Karen, Vincent, you know, yeah. they're all crushing it. 
-hmm. but um, like during the phase of the injury, it was kind of like, okay, like, should I just go to college and like move on with my life? Um, or do I really want to like give another go and like try and come back? And a lot of that, like there were just so many factors in my life in 2020 that were complicating and confusing. So on top of like the struggle between skating and college and I could never like fully let go of skating. So like that was just always in the back of my mind. But um, I was actually like very anxious and a little depressed like mid late 2020 like I had a really hard time figuring out what I wanted next in my life especially because I had already been like trying to rehab and trying to like get back for months now and it was just so hard to see like the progress and like really make any improvement on my jumps so that was really weighing in on me <laughs> there was just like a period of like, do I want to keep doing this? Because in addition to trying to get back, I realize I still have like all the training in front of me that it takes to just like, if I'm healthy, I still need to get back to being competitive in the senior ladies field. So all of that was just really difficult. <laughs> but, you know, after like working on it, um, working on like myself and like therapy sessions a little bit. I think I'm through the worst of it, but still trying to find like my bearings. Yeah, totally. Well, I can tell you that a lot of skaters have been in very similar positions as you and, and the whole, the pessimistic view, the kind of depression mindset of, you know, where am I going to go next? Like, do I pick, you know, all of this different, all of these hurdles to jump through. Um, so many skaters, same story. And, and funny, like we just mentioned Karen and Vincent and Nathan also, who are all in school. Um, I talked to them last month as well in my podcast. And we kind of talked a little bit about as well, how it's kind of like a fork in the road and you got to kind of choose a direction and it's, it's really hard to navigate both. But, um, with all the emotions, it's just, it's a process. You got to run through it and then everything kind of becomes more clear in the end. And so sounds like you're at that point too, which is really nice to hear, but if you're not, you'll get there. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. What's in your arsenal right now in terms of elements for skating? Do you have all your jumps back yet? Or are you still working on getting them all back? No, I'm still working on it. So mm -hmm. I guess technically I've landed all my triples now. But it's um, been a struggle to get them consistent because landing them once is one thing and then landing them like every time is like a whole nother thing. So yeah, I have up until Lutz, Toto, and then yeah, that's it. <laughs> I can't say they're very consistent at the moment, but I can say that's at least okay. I've done all of them. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's a huge step in the comeback process, just being able to do them solo. Uh, the combinations, that comes later as you kind of get more comfortable uh, in doing the solo jumps again. So that sounds like you're on just the right track. When do you plan to compete again? <laughs> yeah, um, hopefully this fall. <laughs> yeah, I still have definitely a long way to go to get my programs ready, work on like the jumps with music and all of that. But hopefully I can get all of my stuff together by this fall. Plenty of time. <laughs> it goes by so fast, you know. It really does, especially when you're training day in and day out. I know it can get really repetitive with doing, you know, the same exact schedule every day. But yeah, just right now we're in what, February? The fall will come in no time. Yeah. It's scary how fast it comes. <laughs> I know that you've had multiple coaches in your past skating career, but where are you now and who are you training with? Mm. So I'm actually in the process of relocating. I've still okay. yet to find exactly who I'm going to next. Um, some of that will be dependent on what college I decide to go to. Makes sense. Yeah. Last year 
was crazy for like a number of reasons, as I mentioned, but um, I was just at home, like essentially like training by myself. I was working and I still am working with Natalia Linichuk, but Ooh. yeah, but she's more of an ice dance coach. That's yeah, not just she's an dance. Olympic gold medalist in ice dance, right? Yeah, she's Amazing. absolutely incredible. Um, and it's, she knows skating so well, she could absolutely teach jumps. But for me, I just need someone who is like a little bit more technical because she teaches a lot about how to use the blade and how to use the ice and make it work for you and not against you, which is like essential, like in all skating, like whether you're jumping, spinning, you're just gliding. But I need someone, it took me a while to realize this, but I need someone a little bit more technical and really like a jump specialist. So I'm in the process of finding out who I'm going to go to next. Um, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm, I'm currently in Lake Placid, actually. I'm working with Paul Wiley here. Ooh, love him. <laughs> yeah, it's my first time working with him, but he's great. He's, he's so smart. <laughs> Definitely. Cool. Well, that's really exciting. That's, that's awesome that you have been working with Natalia. I actually, my, one of my coaches, not my technical coach, but for my skating skills and edges development, I worked with Marina Klimova, who is also an Olympic champion in ice dance. And she gave me so many great skating skills. So it's awesome that you were working with Natalia. Well, you had a really great start internationally before your injury. You got the bronze medal at Junior Worlds in 2019. Congratulations for that, by the way. How did how did competing at Junior Worlds feel compared to competing at Four Continents? Because I know you also competed there. Ah, uh, yes. So Four Continents, as you know, did not go so well for me. And Junior Worlds obviously went extremely well. But at Four Continents, I think... I was actually just a little burned out from nationals because it came. Mm -hmm. It's really fast. Yeah. It was like almost back to back. That was my first time like competing like one after another like that. And I just, I wasn't prepared for stamina you need for it. I mean, I, I was ready, but just competition takes a lot out of you. So just like going in from like one competition to the next, I, had like a hard time figuring out like how to kind of pace myself. Um, Junior Worlds, I had more time in between. Oh, I think, I don't remember if this was the same, I think this was the same year, but they also had Junior Worlds camp in between Nationals and Fort Continents. So that was like another thing, which was- Whoa, (laughs) I didn't even know they had that. (laughs) Three three like big showcase showings in a row. I think it was that same year, but like, yeah, by four continents, I was just pretty burned out. And then I was grateful to have like a little bit of a break in between four continents and junior worlds and just like really get myself ready and like into that, like the zone for junior worlds. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I know that's kind of why a lot of skaters in particularly the Grand Prix circuit, since it goes like one after another, everyone always wants at least a two week break ish in between their Grand Prix so they don't have to go back to back, but we don't always get to choose. Sometimes you get sent like super quick and it's such a big turnaround, but definitely in terms of adrenaline and nerves, having a thicker break is really important. So um, that makes a lot of sense. But what would you say, what was the big, biggest difference between competing as a senior internationally versus competing as a junior for Four Continents versus Junior Worlds? I think the biggest thing was just the choreo sequence. Um, as a senior, you have that choreo sequence and it's a moment to breathe and to remind yourself to breathe. Mm-hmm. And it just, it's a different pacing than the junior program. In the junior program, you're missing that like 30 second choreo sequence, which it's actually a lot when you make the switch. I remember after Four Continents going back to my junior version of my long program, which I hadn't done for a couple months now since the junior Grand Prix circuit. But it was just, it felt like a sprint. Like the second half of my program was like 
one jump after another, like one after another and just <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. But um, like competing as a junior at Junior Worlds versus Four Continents, I just felt like I had a little bit more presence. Like I had obviously done more junior competitions. So I knew kind of like where I was and like who I was on the ice versus like competing at Four Continents. It was like a major championship event and I was so excited and grateful to be there but it was just kind of like a whirlwind of an experience it was so new and I I like showed up like kind of like oh my gosh like that's Shomo Uno or like just fangirling over everyone which you know I think was good but it was just like all in all like a new experience for me Yeah, no, I I totally understand what you're getting at there. Funny story, a similar experience uh, from my skating career was going to the Junior Grand Prix final in Japan uh, right before the Olympics, actually. And that was the first big event that I'd been to because otherwise it was just Junior Grand Prix, which are a normal ice rink. It's not any fancy lighting or, you know, fancy arena. Um, And so that was such a culture shock of just, having the senior event uh and as juniors you were treated kind of like seniors there because of how put together the event was and then all of the senior skaters were running around us as well because they competed directly after and i remember running around that event with nathan chen we were both juniors and we were just sitting there like starry-eyed at everyone who walked in and specifically patrick chan walked into the dining hall and There were a bunch of senior skaters everywhere and Nathan and I were sitting at our own table just like quietly watching everyone and he walked right up to our table asked if he could sit with us and we were just like eyes wide open nodding like yes oh my god it's Patrick Chan like it was so funny um but very very overwhelming for a first time experience I definitely did not have the best skate (laughs) at that junior grand prix final but it gave me a really good uh starting boost I guess because later on a month or two later I was at the Olympics and I felt way more secure I was like okay I've seen all these people in person already like it's fine yeah actually like funny thing I had almost the exact same experience at Four Continents like I was just in the dining hall and I forgot who it was I I think it was like Madison Chalk and Evan Bates I had met them before um, while in Colorado Springs, but they like walked up and were like, Hey, can we sit at your table? (laughs) Like I was just sitting with some of my friends from like the junior level and we're like completely shocked, like almost speechless. Like we didn't even know what to say. Like you want to sit at our table? (laughs) Um, yeah, I mean, of course, (laughs) but yeah, it's pretty funny how when you, like, meet all these people you see on TV in, like, real life, it's such a shock. <laughs> it is. It's it's the best kind of shock, for sure. And it's also just so great to see how friendly the senior skaters are because, you know, they could be a lot more, I don't know, stuck up in a lot of ways if they wanted to be, but none of them are. Like, the skating community is just so friendly. I love that. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Everyone was just, like, so welcoming and humble and like friendly to me who honestly like showed up kind of as like a nobody on the senior circuit. Same. (laughs) But yeah, that's really awesome. So uh, what did you kind of jumping around everywhere, but (laughs) what did you do during your injury? Like what other interests or hobbies did you pick up while you were out? Anything? Mm, Well, you know, I, I spent a lot of time (laughs) just working on myself, which is why I've kind of been like MIA from social media, which I feel really bad about because I like I'll jump on it occasionally and I'll like see these comments asking me like where I am and just like really sweet people of the internet asking how I'm doing. And I don't know, like I like I don't know how to respond, but I also like feel like I can't respond just because Like, in the process of my injury, social media was extremely overwhelming because I saw, like, everyone else just, like, moving forward and, like, improving, and I just felt like I was standing in place, so I just made the decision to 
not be on social media. That's much. smart. Yeah, it was, <laughs> felt really good. <laughs> it gave me time to take a breath. Hobbies. I, oh, okay. So I joined this organization called Women in Politics. Shout out to them. But it's this teen-run organization that focuses on promoting, like, women in the field of politics and encouraging younger generations to pursue politics as well. But it's really cool. Yeah, I actually got involved through a friend that I used to skate with. So I saw her posting about it on her social media, actually. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, that's so cool that you're doing this. Um, Like, how do I apply? And they were just starting out, but I'm magazine writer for them, which has been awesome. That's really awesome. Do you, are you interested in the political science field when you potentially go off to college? Uh, I, you know, I spent so much of my life just skating and dedicating myself to nothing but skating. So I'm not exactly sure what my interests academically are or in like career wise after the sport. But politics is certainly something um, that's like captured my interest outside of skating. Uh, Don't know if I want to go in a career in it, (laughs) but it's cool. I just trying to branch out like while I have the time right now to see like, okay, like what do I like? What do I not like? And go through the process of elimination. (laughs) That's really smart to do. It's actually the perfect time for you to be able to do that. And it sounds like a really productive use of your time. So that's awesome. Cool. Well, final question. What are your future goals for skating? Do you think that you will be at your best for this next Olympic cycle that is coming up in the next year? Or are you looking for a future potential Olympics uh, just in regards to timing with your injury and your recovery process? Yeah. Um, So I have been dreaming about, like, going to the Olympics, like, specifically the 2022 Olympics in Beijing since I was a little girl. So I can't say that's not in my mind. But at the same time, like, coming back this time, it was really important for me with, like, my newfound perspective on sport and like on the whole world outside of sport actually because like myself and like a lot of other skaters I know can get so boxed in to just the barriers of the rank and forget that a world outside of the ice rink even exists I'm really going at like my skating with a whole new perspective now and trying to enjoy it so like the Olympics are not that far off. I mean, they're about a year away. And it's crazy how fast they'll come and how much I still have left to do to get back into the shape and, like, form I want to be. But I'm I'm really just trying to enjoy my skating, which I can definitively say that I do. Go as far as I can, honestly. Like, I don't know how far that'll be, like, I don't know if I'll re-injure myself. Like, I honestly don't know what's going to happen. But all I can do is just focus on today. Not even tomorrow, just today. Like, what do I need to do today to get this done? Like, how can I make myself stronger today than I was yesterday for whatever long-term goals I have, goals I have in mind for my skating? So that could be the Olympics. Bit of a stretch right now, like, really big of a stretch but that could also just be like my next competition in the fall just like putting myself back out there and like taking time to appreciate the little wins that is an excellent perspective to have honestly and I can tell you that so many skaters that I've talked to as well as my own experiences there's kind of a new wave to your skating when you start focusing less on the specific results that you want to achieve and more on enjoying the day-to-day process and enjoying your skating journey and skating for yourself. And so it sounds like you have that mindset and that is really positive, A, for your mental well-being uh, with loving the sport that you're devoting so much time and energy into, but also um, 
for your own personal progress, a lot of the stress is kind of let go. A lot of the anxiety is let go when you start to just, yeah, focus on the day you're at at hand, the tasks you have at hand and enjoy the journey. So that, that sounds really great. And I think, you know, obviously when you're back and when also competitions start happening again, because we have no idea what's going on with how crazy this past year has been. Hopefully next season we'll have competitions. And when we do, you should definitely participate in a lot of them, both for practicing, competing, and for the exposure, judging wise, right? But you're very talented. And I think you're a really strong skater and you have a bright future ahead. So good luck. I believe in you, Ting, and I can't wait to see what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And thanks for having me again and talking with me. I had a really great time. Thanks for coming on. <laughs>